Linus Tech Tips coverage of CES 2014 is brought to you by NCIX.com, your source for great technology, selection, and service, along with Corsair Memory and Western Digital. We're here in the Corsair suite at CES 2014. I have the Obsidian 250D, which has actually been leaked a couple times over the last little bit. And there's been some mixed reactions with some people saying they love it, some people saying they hate it. So we're here to let you guys make your own call. It, of course, has that traditional Obsidian look with the brushed aluminum finish that first started with the 800D Corsair's very first case. You got front USB 3, you have a five and a quarter inch bay, a full size five and a quarter inch bay, not a slimline optical or anything like that, because the idea behind behind this case is that in spite of its small stature, there are no compromises. It actually reminds me of myself a little bit. So on the right hand side, you have support for two 120 millimeter fans. You can, and the spacing is correct for a radiator and even with Asus's motherboards that have those wonky uh, raised PCB things for the VRM. You can still fit a dual rad. It just kind of cuts off one of the fans a little bit, but it's definitely still adequate for cooling your CPU. So there you go. You can put a dual radiator in the one side. You can put a 140 mil fan or 120 millimeter fan in the front. You can put a full size power supply, even an AX1200i with no difficulty and then cable management. Okay, it's not quite the elegance of Corsair's grommet system that they introduced with the 800D, but cable management is taken care of by a smartly placed fan grill. I actually noticed when I opened this thing up for the first time, I was like, oh, it has a wire fan grill on it. I haven't seen one of those in a long time because um, they, they're actually more expensive than doing punched fan grills, but it's in there because the cable management is all done in the front of the case and they wanted to make sure that nothing gets caught in that fan. So they include that nice little touch. And then you've also got, of course, support for up to a dual slot graphics card that's as long as you could possibly want, an ITX motherboard. So the idea is as much performance as you could want in an ITX form factor. In fact, you've even got support for up to four two and a half inch drives or two two and a half inch and two three and a half inch drives. And one of the things that Corsair's not talking about that much for some reason, but I think it's crazy because in my mind, it's one of the smartest things about the case is the rear loading drive bays. So you've got all that cable management room in the front, so you can actually reach the SATA ports and then you can actually actually load them in and out from the back so you don't have to dig a bunch of crap out of your case which is often the problem with these ITX high performance chassis. So there you have it guys that's the Obsidian 250D and then we've also got behind me something that is sort of exciting this is the 730T. Um, unfortunately it has the misfortune of being unfortunate enough to be pretty similar to the 760T with its sexy acrylic full acrylic side panel window thing. It's basically the same one quite a bit less expensive expensive, but it doesn't have that same striking ex ex striking experience appearance. The experience of the appearance of the clearance of the CPU. Anyway, um, I don't know where I'm going with this, but the point is it's pretty similar internally to a 750D. It has a bit of a different look. It comes in at a lower price, and there you go. On to peripherals, there's a couple things on display. Number one is the Raptor M45, which is an evolutionary step forward from the M40 and features actually a, enough different features. I'm not, not even sure why they called it an M45 because this is a very, very different mouse. It has a PixArt PWM3310 sensor. So who the devil is PixArt, you might be asking? Well, Avago was actually acquired about six months ago, so this is a, a collaborative sensor project between, it was being worked on at Avago, and then now uh, Pixart has taken over and it has some interesting new features. So number one is now it is an IR mouse, so that means you can't see that glow under it. Number two is the DPI has been increased from 4,000 max to 5,000 max. And number three, and this will be very important to a lot of people, is that DPI increments are now much more granular. You can go all the way from 50 to 5,000 DPI in 50 DPI increments on this mouse in the software. And there's other customizability as well. So you can customize things like lift distance once it's available. It's actually coming sometime in the next couple of months, so I'm pretty excited to check it out. The last thing is that this sensor has actually been tuned for gaming surfaces, so while the older mentality might have been, okay, let's make it work on, you know, pants or mules or whatever surface you might happen to want to put it on, um, most gamers who are spending, you know, 60 70 $80, however much on a mouse, probably have a $20 cloth mouse pad at the very least, so we might as well just make it optimized for that in the first place. It has the same M40 feature 
features that I personally quite like, which is the very lightweight construction, but with an adjustable weight system. The weighted scroll wheel, I think they call it the high mass scroll wheel, but what they're trying to say is it's made of metal and it has a nice rubber finish on it as well as a nice soft touch finish and a Corsair LED. The next one, speaking of LEDs, is the Raptor K40 and my cord for this is a little bit on the shorter side, so I'm going to go ahead and move and like sit on this table or something. This is kind of a, a hybrid of the... Uh of the K30 and the K50. So unlike the K50, it doesn't have as many macro keys, uh, but unlike the K30, it now has full RGB backlighting, and that's at an $80 price point. So it's a membrane keyboard, yes. It's $80, yes, and I understand. You can buy a mechanical keyboard for $80, but if you want RGB backlighting, which personally I don't really care about unless it's on a mechanical keyboard, more on that soon. <clears throat> anyway, if you want RGB backlighting and you're okay with membrane, then this looks like it should be a pretty compelling option. Don't miss any of our CES 2014 coverage here. Guys, remember, our trip to the show was brought to you by NCIX.com, your source for great technology selection and surface. And, of course, surface, service. And, of course, they are my bros. I worked there for a long time. I know everyone there. They're awesome. And we also have two other sponsors. Number one is Corsair. And number two, not in any particular order, is Western Digital. Big thanks to those guys for allowing us to be here as well.